Hey, listeners, we are back with another episode of the Spinoff Show, a very, very special episode of the, uh, the Spinoff Show. Excuse me. On this episode, we have on my jock and nerd co-host, Imran, the fucking nerd. And the reason I have this guy on is we decided a long while back that we were going to try out this thing called float therapy or sensory dep- deprivation in a float tank. We decided we would do something where we would go into the float tank for an hour and then immediately after record a spinoff show detailing all our thoughts on the process, what we felt inside the float tank, et cetera, et cetera. Imran's been a little sick, so we actually did the float tank on Saturday, January 25th, and now we are recording this episode on Sunday, January 26th, where you're going to hear all our thoughts on float therapy here with uh, Imran the Nerd from Jock Nerd Podcast. Check it out. This is the Jock Spinoff Show. We are live or recording right now with uh, Imran, the horse voice version of yourself is here. Imran, first off, we have to address this because you weren't on the last show of Jock and Nerd. So now you're on the spinoff show. You're, you're abandoning Jock and Nerd, but your voice is good enough to do the spinoff show. Well, look, it's on, it's not, it's oh on its way back. So to the listener, I apologize. What's going if on with your fucking voice? This becomes, I swallowed a frog. I was trying to do a Baby Yoda impersonation, but the frog got stuck. That's what happened. No, <laughs> well, you know how it goes. You go from the flu to bronchitis. You have Doesn't coronavirus? No, it, no, I don't. Okay. But it was scary because the day I got sick was when I got back from New Orleans, the girl next to me was sneezing, and that was the same day that story broke. <laughs> Oh, I was God. like, hold on, wait a minute, what's going on here? But I'm pretty sure I don't have the coronavirus, like 99% f- sure. <laughs> I've done a lot, of, I've done a little research, meaning I've read one or two articles, which is uh, nothing really. But I have read that although people are dying, that this virus is in China, obviously originated in China, but yeah. if you're young and like a normal person it's just like having the cold or the flu you should be able to fight you should be able to fight like there's some stuff that i read that there's probably hundreds of people that have been affected by this hundreds of thousands you just don't hear about it because they just were thought it was the regular cold or flu the symptoms are similar and i have a compromised immune system with this vitiligo so oh no i may be a candidate but yeah it's like uh i've got you know i've been watching these shows about epidemics and pandemics (laughs) and you kind of get obsessed of like what would happen if there was another influenza that killed a whole bunch of people like back in the day and you're you're not at all a tin foil hat guy so no course. not at all but are we prepared <laughs> as our infrastructure prepared it could happen again see this guy this guy's bird, already the bird flu is like the craziest thing also so it's like another strain of that <laughs> anyways the that's world is gonna collapse here. the illuminati We're, did it zombie the zombie apocalypse is coming well that's not what we're here to talk about glad you're <laughs> You decided you could do the spinoff show, but not uh, Jock and Nerd. I really, I appreciate you jumping on this, and I'm glad that you just don't care about Jock and Nerd anymore. Listen, uh, my voice is a lot better now, and everything you said was false about me in the last episode, (laughs) listener. Don't listen to it. So the reason I had you on this show, I talked about it in the intro, but just to explain, a while back, I had the idea of us doing a float tank and recording a show right after we did a float tank. Um but I wanted to get into, before we talk about our experience, what our previous knowledge of the float tank was and where we gained it from, all that stuff. So I'll start. Okay. Um, I'm a big Joe Rogan podcast listener, obviously the inspiration for this spinoff show. You don't say I'm shocked. <laughs> and he talks about this float tank stuff all the time. On partic- I mean, he records three or four episodes a week. He has to mention it to one of his guests at least once or twice a week about how he has a float tank in his studio, how he gets in there and he loves it. It, it, The float therapy, his mind goes to crazy um, psychedelic experiences while he's in there. It's super interesting. Apparently, um, you get in there, you float, and your mind just wanders. 
Um, so Does I was he ever mentioned how long he's in there. I don't remember. I don't remember offhand. Well, we'll mm-hmm. get into how long we did it, but yeah. I don't remember offhand how lo- how uh, how long he normally goes. So, um, but yeah, Imran, what was uh, your experiences with float tank prior to actually jumping in? Well, so I've heard about this thing, and uh, you know, like a lot of things health and wellness i learned from my sister like she turned me on to crossfit and paleo <laughs> she's done the float tank before she likes to try everything but i feel like i heard about this back in college there was a, a a cult movie called altered states william hurt's first movie from 1980 about a doctor who's uh, experimenting with uh, hallucinogens and acid and sensory deprivation trying to find the truth that kind of makes him go crazy and lose grip on a reality so I always thought it was like a trip, like you're going to hallucinate mm. and uh, you can, but also that you could get in touch with yourself and, and calm your mind. And um, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I've always wanted to go for like the fun mind ride. Like I'm always willing to try stuff like that, that, <laughs> that, that alters your, alters your states. Also a great game on the original Sega. Oh, that's altered beats. <laughs> it's different. Uh, so, you know, it's like a, I thought it was a cheap high. Like, oh, you get a buzz. Uh, and maybe you find out something about yourself. And yeah. then, of course, there's that classic Simpsons episode where they're in float tanks. But <laughs> So um, we we intended – I think I asked you to do this probably five or six months ago, yeah, maybe longer. Yeah. I'm glad we followed through. Yeah, we, we, this is how it is. We, we say we're going to do something, and then we don't do it. Yeah. Um, but randomly, I texted Imran, and I go, hey, let's do it next Saturday, meaning yesterday. And uh, Imran was like, "Yeah, sure." And then I just called the I called the random place right by his house, set it up, and then said, "Imran, we're doing this at noon. Me and you, not in the same tank. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> You'd be a bastard." Um, and there it is. So just randomly decided, you know what? We should finally just do it. So the the bro science portion of this, yeah. Um, to for the listeners that don't know, so basically, whoever invented this, I re- I learned this from Joe Rogan. So. This take this with pun intended, a grain of salt. But um, apparently, the guy that invented this was trying to think of ways to free the mind from any distractions. Right? Yeah. So even at this moment, your mind is thinking about the chair you're sitting on, or the clothes you're wearing, or anything. Like even if you have no thoughts going through your head, your mind is still working against gravity, or you know, like I said, yep, yep. anything that's on your body, or you know. Um, on the ground. So anything that's touching you. So what these float tanks do is they're filled with 1,100 pounds of Epsom salts. Yeah, I think that was the number. It's yeah, a lot right. of salt. And it's a tank that's nine feet long, five feet wide. You get in there, and the water is around 94 degrees, 93 degrees. So it's about the temperature of your body. And the, there's enough salt in there to make you float, to experience almost a zero gravity sensation. And the water around you is your body, almost your body temperature. So literally, your body is eliminated from any sort of feeling from the outside world. There's no gravity. Yeah, Yeah, there's no gravity being um, uh, put upon you. There's no, the water is the same temperature as your body, so you don't feel the water necessarily. So your mind is literally free, and then you turn off the lights, and it's very quiet in there as well, so the water's still. So your mind is literally free from all the things that are um, impeding it from being free, Right. All the senses are are eliminated so that your mind can literally just wander, and that's yep. that's the sensation that this guy wanted to create is what what happens when your mind is free from all the outside influences. What happens then? So that this is what a float tank kind of does. Do you have anything to add happen. on that? No, that's absolutely right. I think we should also describe like there's tanks that are coffin like, of course, but these and then there's ones that it's seven feet high and it slopes down. So there isn't that much of a claustrophobic feeling in the ones we did. Right. Um, but it does, once you're in there, it doesn't make a difference because it's black, pitch black, black. Right, black. right. Well, you can, there, so the one, the particular place we went to had the option of putting on a light. You also had an intercom there um, if you really got freaked out and needed something. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the the whole process before we get into... You know what we actually felt. Me and Emran get there at noon. Um, we have our own separate rooms. You're supposed to rinse off before. Yeah. You're not supposed to shave or anything prior to because it's filled with salt. No open wounds. Um, try not to be under the influence of anything. Shower. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, rinse off, and then you're ready to go, and you're completely naked. Like literally, yeah. I called the guy prior. Hey, are we supposed to bring swim trunks? He goes, No, you shouldn't bring anything because you don't want anything distracting you from yourself in there. See, I thought he was going to give us something to wear. Was That's the, what I that thought. Was, right? And I then didn't he's realize like, we're going to nope. be naked. Buck ass naked. I was yeah. like, All right. Oh, well. Sure. <laughs> yeah, buck naked. So imagine's, uh, imagine Imran's, or don't imagine Imran's <laughs> <laughs> vitiligoed penis just floating around there. But we should say shout out to, uh, what was his name? John at Tranquil Waters Float. Yeah. He's very good. Very informative. Gave very us a very detailed breakdown yeah. of um, what to expect. So prior to getting in the tank, literally, let's let's talk about as we're, we're in the place, we're getting explained everything that's about to happen. Imran, did you have any, what were your thoughts right up until jumping into the tank? Like, what, I, you was know, there I, anything happening with you? I didn't. I still, I was like, I don't know what to expect. Here's my one thing with water, right? <laughs> I don't play well with water. I'm not the best swimmer. I've never been comfortable in pools or swimming. There may have been a traumatic thing that happened to me when I was a kid. And I still remember, like, I remember I was four years old and I think they were taking me to the pool to learn how to swim. All I remember is running and I slipped. And the next thing I remember is I'm looking up through the, from the bottom of the pool <laughs> As my uncle like reaches down to fucking save me and I'm not like knowing what the fuck just happened. So like, I think I fell in the water and I've, ne- so ever since then I've just had a thing with water. water. So, so I was like, I don't know. You know, the only thing is like this, I better, my fat ass better float in this water because That's right, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. But other than that, I was really open to this experience. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I just kind of want to relax. Let's get in there and get comfortable. I was, uh, you know, really wanting to get in and try it out. It was a little weird when he was explaining stuff, but then by the time we get to get in, I was like, all right, let's do this. Right. Well, yeah. When he was explaining everything, there were so many different things that he was talking about that I was going, oh my God, am I going to fuck this up? I don't even right, know. Right. Yeah. I didn't want to fuck it up. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and the biggest thing obviously is it's not deep. It's only what, like maybe a foot, two feet yeah, deep. Yeah. So you're not going to drown necessarily, but I, yeah. you, you do worry. All right, am I going to float? Am I going to be that idiot that doesn't yeah. know, can't float in this thing? Right. Um, you know, Joe Rogan always talks about the weird psychedelic stuff that you kind of yeah. see or that are trippy kind of things that yeah. happen. Yeah. As you're, so th- that I had that expectation sort of. Yeah. And then the night before I was looking up people's float tank experiences and I was about to read one and I go, you know what? I'm not don't, gonna read it. Don't. I don't want any. I don't want to have any expectations. So literally, yeah. Yeah. as I'm going in there, my thoughts are: don't fuck it up. Yeah. Don't slip. Um, and then let's just see what happens. Like it's literally, very slippery. What are we yes. gonna do? Yeah. Let's just see yeah. what 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 the hell you know. I have no idea. I was literally like, "Am I gonna have the lights off?" And I, it, I yeah. in my mind prior to going in, I'm like, "You know what? Go for the full experience. Just have the lights off. What's, All right, what's the so worst sh- that can happen?" You shower off. You step in there. Yeah. What happened next? Did you sit down and then literally you I sit you sit down, your legs go out and you you can feel the sensation of floating. Yeah. I had the light on. The the last thing I needed to do was rest my neck back and like cuz you're supposed to have your head all the way back as if you're seated like literally on your back and only like your face is showing. The water yeah. goes up past your ears and you're wearing earplugs. Um so that that was the only thing is just getting situated. And I used the neck pillow for a little bit, and I go, you know what? Fuck this neck pillow. Like I want the full experience. So I was literally laying there, and I just go, you know what? Turn the lights off. Let's see what happens. So I I, I got adjusted um, pretty quickly, other than my neck, which I'll yeah. talk about as we jump into this more. What about you? Did you did you get in there right away, and you were like, I'm turning the lights off, or what? Yeah, what was absolutely, your- I got in there right away, and I was. Uh, it took me a little bit a while to situate myself and. And then I was like, holy shit, I'm floating. I was like, even my fat ass is floating. It's crazy. <laughs> I did use the pillow, but I'll the whole agree. time? Yes. Wow. But it's we that position is weird. Your neck is like resisting and it gets stiff because it it wants support and you're afraid to let go. So a lot of the beginning I was just trying to relax and uh and and just get my neck to just fucking relax. So that's actually a good point. For me, I guess without that pillow, my neck didn't know what to do, so I, right. my neck kept felting, feeling like it needed to tilt up a little bit, as if I was on a pillow. Yeah. So my neck, like towards the middle and end, my neck felt like really tense because my body was 
natural or used to you know having a little pillow so my neck was like the only part that kept going up like i had my head tilted up a little bit i would notice it and be like oh shit i gotta like relax my shoulders and put my head back so that was the only thing that was impeding my experiences i kept my my body kept subconsciously wanting a pillow underneath its head yeah it's not a natural well you're not used to that you're basically. not you, even yeah most people don't lay on even when they go to sleep they don't lay right. on their back with their head a is pillow. floating and their yeah. head is just floating there <laughs> yeah so your body's like what the hell's going on and then you put your arms out and you kind of you know get you you get your figure out where you are and then yeah and then i just turn off the light yeah so do you want to start with with your experience uh okay so again <laughs> not the best in water but i was floating yeah, were, so did you? Were you comfortable right away? Because you're not the best in water. It, it, I, it, it, I, get, I got pretty comfortable pretty, pretty quickly. That, that's why I used the neck pillow. It just made me feel a little bit like, like you're in a bed. Safer, yes. Like at least my head's not gonna fucking dip back. But there is so much salt in here. It's incredible how you don't have to do anything, and you just let go, and you're just floating. So in the beginning, I'm floating and I'm kind of moving around, and I, or it felt like I was moving around. <laughs> It felt like I was adrift in the ocean, maybe. Uh, uh, and but sometimes you'd hit the side and it kind of take you out of it. Um, but that moving around feeling slowly felt like I was just floating in this weird void that was never ending, <laughs> right? And so in my head, it's it's wild too. When you open and close your eyes, there's no difference, right? Mm, right. That was very crazy. I was like, that's insane. Like, you can't tell. So I had my eyes closed for a long time. I was like, let me focus. Let me use this time. What can I do here? Can I do something productive in my head? Uh, and then I would open and close my eyes and be like, holy shit, it's the same. Uh, and then, then it felt like I was on like a mushroom cloud. Like I kind of <laughs> was resting on something really soft. Uh, and... Again, in my head, I'm like, okay, what can, what, what am I supposed to be thinking about? <laughs> but even my, my mind races with so many things and I, I end up talking to myself. <laughs> um, and so I remember being very in and out of it in this weird state and maybe like seeing like sparkly things in the darkness, real faint. Uh, but I also remember talking to someone about what something i was fuck? somewhere <laughs> having a thing but here's the thing by the time i was like getting into it and settled and kind of almost understanding what this was the fucking light went on mm. and i was like what the hour went up the time went by so quickly that it was alarming i was for sure i was like there's no way that was an hour i think this light went on too soon but it was a fucking hour uh, and it went for in the beginning, maybe, I don't know. I had no, maybe like 15 minutes. I was like conscious <laughs> and then boom, time warp. It's over. I was like, what the fuck happened? I don't know if I fell asleep or I was in this weird, it was very relaxing though. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then, then, and then before I knew it, it was over and I, I could have kept going at who, that point. Who were you easy. talking to? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I, f I think it was like myself. Was it? Were you verbally speaking or was it in your head? No, it was in my head. I may have been speaking out loud. I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I do that in my sleep. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't, I'm not awake to hear it. So, but I felt like I was going someplace. It was almost like the beginning of like an out of body experience, the mm. very beginning. And I think if I do it some more times and do a longer float, like the that's the thing. The yeah. first time you're not sure what you what to do, what's going to happen. Now I feel like I can use it a little bit and and maybe get into that state. Right, right. Yeah, they they mention okay. at a, at the place we went to that it takes about two or three floats to really get the full experience because the first time your body, your mind is racing with expectations and yeah. uh, the unknown, and it takes a lot longer for you to get in that state where you can really get crazy in there. So um, I thought I may have I was gonna freak out, but right away, it, I was like, I can handle this. I was like, all right, this is fine. Right. Uh, I did not get to that panic point, but then and and after you get past that and you just let it go, that's when all that other shit happens. <laughs> right. But initially, I was like, all right, what's gonna be an hour? How long? What am I gonna do? What's going? And then, boom, it's over. I was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> yeah. So my experience was a little different. I got in there and right away I started floating. 
Um, as I mentioned, my neck was a little weirded out a little bit by the, the experience, but I got in there and I was relaxed right away. I was breathing fine. Um, I went through a, a few different experiences. So the first, I don't even know how to s- segment this, but at first I was, I was in there and I'm going, man, this is going to be an hour. Yeah. What am I going to do? Because <laughs> yeah. I don't meditate ever. I'm also one of those that my mind is racing. I'm easily distracted. I'm on my phone We're all the time. We're all on our phones all the time every five seconds. Yeah, that was one of the big th- takeaways I realized is I don't meditate very often at all. I don't, yeah. I'm without, I'm not ever without my phones because literally within the first few minutes, I'm like, I want to check my phone. What time is it? <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to do for an hour yeah. without checking my phone or, or being busy with something? I'm just laying here. Yeah. So that was the first thing. Then I started feeling like a little kid. So oh. I started stretching my arms out and like actively pushing myself from one side to the other, just okay. like floating in, like as if I was a little kid in water like in the, for the first time. So I'd float back and forth. I'd float lengthways. So I'd have my head hit the top. I'd float back down and have my feet hit the bottom. I was just literally just floating around like a little kid, like playing. Fun. I was just having fun in there. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to turn on my side to see if I could float. Then I was like, maybe I turn on my face. I'm like, no, that's probably a bad idea. Oh my idea. god! Don't, did you don't turn, turn on your did fucking you turn face? Turn on your side in there. <laughs> I turned I mean, on my side. It didn't. It, you can't float though. You can't float that way. No, you. Uh, it's you an L. <laughs> then I was like, should I turn on my face? And then I was yeah, thinking about. Could, at that point, a, a really cryptic thought came through my head of like being one of those dead bodies that you just <laughs> find where someone opens the door and I'm just face first in the water. <laughs> Choked on just, salt water. Just dead. Yeah. I wanted <laughs> so, to see if I could float face first. <laughs> Smart. Then, uh, then you know how uh, he goes, hey, don't touch your face. You don't want salt in your eyes. Yes. So, you know, so immediately I thought of that, and I'm going, oh, my face is itchy. I want to scratch my face. Oh, so God. then that thought kept pervading randomly like, oh, man, my face is itchy. And then I'd go like, I want to scratch it. I'm going to scratch it. I'm going to scratch it. Okay, I scratched my head. Oh, nope, no salt in my eyes. I'm still good. So yeah. little kid stuff just kept running through my head. Yeah, I also kept getting distracted by the fact that I was like, "Is water in my ear? Did I put these earplugs in tight enough? Yeah, what's going on?" Like, literally, my mind was jumping all all around because it, it was free from, it, you know, free from my phone, free from any distractions. So I kept jumping around to different places. Um, so that was part of my experience. Then I had my eyes open for most of the time. I started seeing auroras, like purple and yellow auroras. Yes, were they moving, like spinning? They were like just like pulsing like mm. but slowly like mm. so i was like my mind th- mindset was it's not that dark in here but then wow. i was going but where are these i was like are these like residual light from the door underneath what's yeah. going on so i was kind of tripped out by that that's awesome yeah i was but then the thing is is i never got into like a completely relaxed state probably because i was playing so often in the beginning oh. so i would be laying there and in this like kind of zone and then my body would hit the side so i'd like jolted up and then I, i'd be like relaxed and then my body would hit the back you know hit my head would hit the the, the top yeah, of the tank so i never like it. found mm. complete stillness mm-hmm. which the, which is why i'd probably want to do it i definitely want to do it again mm-hmm. but it, i don't think i ever was in that state where i was just floating still i was always kind of moving at some points my body was like diagonal in the tank yeah it was strange so i was just moving like my body was just moving all around i think it's just because i was never completely completely relaxed is that because you refuse to let yourself be still for this long amount like you just can't i think subconsciously because i was trying to be still yeah like i was like flexing to like just stay still yeah and i would still be like moving i could still feel myself like slowly drifting to one side and then slowly drifting to the other um the one of the weirdest things that came through my brain though is I started making music in my mind oh, that's to fill awesome. the time. Yeah, and I started again very random. I started singing probably because of the nanny that I'd watched earlier this week. <laughs> I started singing pro wrestling songs in my head. Okay, so I started singing in my head Hulk Hogan's theme music from the 1980s. I Oops. am a real. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's what went through your mind yes okay so i started remembering all the pro wrestling entrance songs and just using that time to fill it you were making music like you were making original music in your head no i was no. remembering the songs and then literally playing the whole song in my brain like at least like the first two two to three verses yeah. so i was just like wow this is really fucking weird why am i thinking about this <laughs> 
Um, and then random thoughts throughout the, the entire thing, like, what am I going to be doing later? What time is it? Where am I at? There was one point, though, where I was really, like, kind of bored. I was God, like, so yeah. you, you have a real problem just being in the moment. Right. Do you? Yeah. This is this supposed to help you. Do you ever just sit and focus on your breathing? Hardly Inhale, ever. Inhale in that, your nose, that, out through your mouth. Hardly ever up until then. That When I started having getting really bored, I was like, yeah. just lay back and breathe for a little bit. Yeah. But I wasn't like tense. Yeah. I was literally just calm going, okay, what am I going to be doing later? What time's dinner? Where where am I going to be at? What time is it? Yeah. Should I go up and check my phone? No, don't check your phone. Don't oh be an idiot. God. Just can't so, stop. So, so that was mind. one of the big takeaways for me is yeah. I don't ever really just live in the moment in silence. I think listen, I think a lot of people I like that now we don't we've stopped just sit, you know go walking through the park sitting in a park bench and that just nothing just sitting there enjoying oh, like the no phone ruins that nobody does that anymore we can't be with ourselves we don't know uh how to meditate but i think cuz when i was in there i was i was inhaling through the nose out through the mouth just kind of focusing on that and that really helped calm my mind to where i just let stuff happen mm. um but i'm t- i i i feel this addiction but like it's so important when we don't realize that you just got to be without anything and some stillness and some quietness every so often because there's so much stimulus everywhere. So it did make me realize how we just can't sit with ourselves anymore. Yeah. That, that was one of my big takeaways is I was just going, man, I, I'm not good with just being by myself with no distractions. Yeah. <laughs> Literally I was going, should I check my phone? <laughs> what about my phone? What about, what about later? What about, what am I doing? There's nothing to entertain me. I'm looking straight up. It's black in here. Man, oh wait, this is fun. I think that was part of the reason why I started acting like a little kid in there. I was like, yeah. "Well, I'm gonna be in here. I might as well have some fun." And then started like literally pushing myself up against the wall. Yeah, St- I was stretching out a lot. Yeah, I well, that's good. Yeah, the how, stretching's good. Yeah, I kept seeing like how far my le- like can I touch the the top of the tank and the bottom of my yeah. tank if I completely yeah. stretch out like little stupid things like that. Yeah. Then the, the random thought came into my head. I was going, "What if like a nine foot dude came in here? How would they?" <laughs> <laughs> how can they fit a person that's like over seven five? What, how would they do this? Yeah, literally, all the, the most random thoughts ever. I never, never like cr- did it for you. Did you ever feel like panicking or everything? Anything like no, that? Yeah, no, me it got, no, it got, I was like, yeah, no. I thought I would, but it, I was just like, all right, this is. I, I was just fine. Like, what I wanted it to be productive in my head, right? You know, but I didn't know how to do that either. I was like, I don't know. Should I plan something? Do I come up with something? Like, uh, and then, and then I, I don't know. Then I fell asleep and I woke up. (laughs) Well, the guy was like, don't go in with an intention. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually the next time I do it, I think I'm going to go in with some sort of like plan that I want to think about Yeah. because without any intention, my mind just went all over the place, but it didn't get to the point where I did anything like where I was going, whoa, that's trippy. Well, now you know right. what to expect. You may be able to get there quicker. It. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I, th- and I think like, like this and like acupuncture and things and massage, like you got to do it a couple of times. Uh, oh, this is way better than like a deep tissue massage. Deep tissue yeah. massage hurts. So how did your muscles feel? Relaxed. Relaxed. And yeah. afterwards it was still good. Yeah. We should, we should, um, well, we should get into how we felt post since we're doing this a day after. Well, there's but, a bunch of benefits of, that they tell you, and he, you know, he reminded you. So I read some stuff after yeah. about Epsom salts. Yeah, apparently that's an old wives' tale. Like it does help. Like hot water does help relax your muscles, yeah. but there isn't the salt a ton. Doesn't of, do anything. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of um, different opinions. There's nothing really medically published that I saw where Epsom salts actually help. But I mean, I did feel super relaxed in there. It exfoliates your skin. Yeah, my skin was the, super soft. That's the other thing. All these health benefits, I, the, there's, the claims aren't fully supported by everyone still mm-hmm. yet. Even though I read like the first float tank, the guy started in 1954. It's been around for a while, but um, you know, they're, they're, the benefits of, are not a hundred percent right. Uh, pure science proven or whatever. But he said things like it should reduce stress, lower your blood pressure increases endorphins helps you recover from workouts pre-workout post-workout inflammation but i felt afterwards i felt a little light like lighter Mm. you know walking around 
I felt super, super relaxed, all yeah. like loosey goosey. And he said it should help you sleep better uh, the next night. And then he's like, the more you do it, you feel benefits for more days. So I thought that was that was interesting. But I could see how this could help your muscles relax and how it could get you into a, a state of a focus before if you were trying to do something. Uh, yeah, my my immediate. So immediately I got out. I was like, oh wow, my my. I definitely feel refreshed. Yeah. That was the first thing. I felt refreshed. Yeah. My body felt really relaxed. I was very curious. I had questions about everything right yeah. after. Uh, my skin felt really nice. So I, he mentioned that you would sleep really well. So I took a little nap. Yeah. And my nap was only probably like an hour and a half. Yeah. I had some really vivid dreams during that hour really? and a half nap. Yeah, I oh, was man. in the zone right away in my nap. Because I was a little sleepy and I was trying to take a nap and I didn't quite get there right, the, afterwards because you're so relaxed. I should right. have done that. But uh, what were the dreams? What kind of dreams? I didn't. I should have written them down. But they were, they were, they were, they were dreams that you would only have if you're in a deep sleep. Uh, like, and I okay. got there within an hour and real, a half, real quick. Yeah. yeah, really quick. So that surprised me. Just waking up, going, "Holy shit!" I was fucking yeah. dreaming, and I looked at the time like it's only been an hour and a half. You got quality sleep way quicker. Afterwards. Right, right. Huh, that's interesting. Um, and then last night, I, I th- might have been because of the tank. Who knows? I mean, it might be attributed just like a, pl- a placebo effect. I did the tank and these thoughts came to my head. But last night, even this morning, I was like, man, I'm really motivated now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. My my brain was like, I'm really, I'm, I'm motivated. I, I, I know what I need to do now in life. I know all the steps to get there. I know how to be disciplined. Um, so in t- on top of this flow tank thing, I've been doing no alcohol through this entire month. Yeah, dry January, right? Right. right. How's so, it going? It's great. Great. Wow. Right. So That's like, amazing. I've been doing that on top of this. So I'm like, I was like last night where I was watching, I was looking at one of my friends who's been dry for four months and is super motivated. Um, his name's Nico. He's actually been on the show. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm looking at his stuff and I'm going, man, like, I'm motivated. Like I, I feel I feel something. I feel like a like this is a turning point. Like this whole month has been a turning point in my life. I'm I'm mo- I'm focused. Yeah. I have things in order. I know what yeah. to do. I know now to make the most of everything. And when I'm there, I was really like, I'm gonna put my phone down and I'm gonna focus on just watching this TV. And I'm not gonna check my phone. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know if it was the tank that did all this the, to me. All the toxins are out of your body. Yeah, but I just dry. felt this, re- and I still feel it today. I feel this yeah. renewed sense of. That was good. This whole month has been good. You've like literally I was I was taking a piss like late last night, late last night. I'm going, today was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> well that's And I never I, think like this. Yeah. I'm usually just whatever. Like it doesn't I, matter to me. I think it could co- com- combined with the dry January that may be where, where that's coming from. I you know that's funny because me the rest of the day, <laughs> yeah. I was super just mellow. Yeah. Like I'm already like you can't get me mad. Nothing's gonna get me angry. But I was even more like that. I was like <laughs> everything's cool, man. To the point where I remember I was driving and I'm like driving under the speed limit. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I gotta go to the speed limit. I was so like relaxed, relaxed, and then some weird just out of it. That I was paying attention to how fast I was driving, and as I went grocery shopping, and I was just like enjoying walking through Aldi. For some fucking reason, was and it? I was like, "This is not this line here. This is not going to get me mad. I'm like, this is cool. I'm fine, man." Well, that's funny you say that. Is there anything that you could compare that to that's ever done that for you? I I, I imagine that's what like fucking Valium or, the, or <laughs> the fucking or some antidepressants. Does um, weed do that? Did you? Was it the same yeah, as it weed? De- yeah. It, well, depends on the strain. But you were cloudy, cannabis. right? Like weed can make you a little cloudy. Yes, yeah. weed makes you more. I use. I like to use the word logy in logy. my head. Okay, a little heavy. Uh, but it depends on the strain of cannabis. Sure. There's there's stuff that that. But I don't know. I, it's just I. So I recently, I also did acupuncture when when I hurt my back before <laughs> I went to New Orleans for vacation. I was like, let's try acupuncture. And that was also very relaxing. I felt the same way after that that I did this. Mm-hmm. And that was not even for – it was like an hour uh, appointment, and she stuck needles all over weird places, pins. and then. But afterwards, I kind of felt really relaxed and mellow hmm. uh, the That's same funny. way. That yeah. you, you kind of felt very relaxed. Yeah. Where by the end of last night, I was going, I'm, I'm ready to do some you shit. You were getting all motivated. I was motivated. Straight. I was going yeah. to myself – I'm gonna go to. I'm 
it's like today, for instance, I'm going to record this podcast, and I never work out on Sunday. I was like, I'm going to go work out. Oh, shit, on Sunday. <laughs> I'm on the Lord's out. Day, Anthony. I'm going to go work out, you. and then I'm going to go home, and I'm going to be focused on whatever the hell I do. I'm going to, if I watch TV, I'm going to be fully immersed in whatever I'm watching. I was, when, and I was going, if I'm on my phone, I'm going to be pulling up YouTube videos to learn things, and then when I go to work on Monday, I'm going to give it my all at work uh, you, every you know day. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it lasts till Monday. No, I don't know if it'll be last, yeah. but the, the, I felt those things, and I was going, so... I'm like I'm definitely going to do this again. Are yeah. you? Are, is that yeah. the? Are you going to do it again? I would like to do it again. And I was see, I was afraid of the time. I was like sixty minutes. Is that? It seems like a long time. Right. Now I don't think it's long enough. I, they have like ninety minute sessions. And we were talking to the guy, and he's like, people do two hour, three, two, three hour, hour, six hour float sessions. But time goes by like that. So I kind of want to do a 90 minute one. I would love to keep trying it and doing it longer. Right. And see where I get to. It's kind of mm. like, it's a weird, like, it's like climbing this ladder. It's like this journey, this progress. Like, what happens at the 90 minute mark? What would happen at 120 minutes? Mm hmm. You, uh, yeah. Did you feel like, did you feel it was beneficial? Oh, yeah. To you? I mean, I think it is something a lot like, you know, massage and acupuncture that people should do uh, routinely once a week, once a month, whatever. But I do feel like all these things are for health and wellness helps reduce stress and helps uh, get your blood flowing and improve, improves, you know, especially this helps uh, any kind of muscle soreness. If you have back problems, Right, I think that would really help you. But also in your case, it helps brain activity. Yeah. Um, well, I think, it, it made me realize to like slow down and be yes, in the more in the moment. Yes. But then it also stimulated me afterwards to be like, yeah, yeah you, I can do this. Do, I can do this. Stuff. I can do all of this. <laughs> I, I, my thought on it is even if the science doesn't back up, like the the post benefits, I think right. in the moment it does. You definitely will get to psychedelic places. I think that science yeah, yeah. probably is true. Post, I don't know, but if you come out of it and you're feeling motivated or relaxed, you know, and even if it's just a placebo effect, like that's the benefit that you think you're supposed to have, so you have it. That's still a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I even I kind of want to try it after smoking a big joint once. We should get into this too. I want, I want to get lit and then go in there, but it has to be the right strain of cannabis and like a sativa or maybe a indica. Something well, the thing is, if you do an indica, yeah, you relax. You think you just fall asleep? <laughs> you might just, you might just fall asleep. A sativa would keep you awake and your mind would be going, but you it, may that, freak out. It would be in, well. I think it'd be interesting to try both because I think yeah. just. Uh, and then to come might make you just super relaxed, and you might yeah. just be super at peace, and maybe your you mind can go the, places. Yeah, get to that state quicker. But a sativa might do what was how I was feeling post, where you start like yeah. thinking about things and scheming yeah. and building yeah. things yep, in your yep. mind. You get creative. You yeah. get creative thoughts on 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 the sativa. So uh, that could enhances. be interesting. But that's what I want to try next time. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have coffee that day either because it says you shouldn't drink coffee. Right. But I would recommend this. I would if I would if people are freaked out. Like I remember Rugs mentioned he's like I would fucking freak out. I don't think you think you're gonna freak you out, but so. it's 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 a big tank. It's not like a coffin tank. So you just gotta sit there with yourself. I think it's harder to just be with yourself and not have a phone for an hour. Right. Than be in the tank itself. Yeah, I don't think the tank itself feels like I didn't feel. Even though it isn't a huge tank, I didn't feel claustrophobic. No, at all. not at all. At least the way they set up their tank with it it's being good. seven yeah. feet as you first yeah. get in. Yeah, I always felt like I reached my hands up. Yeah, I was always like, oh, there's there's space in here. And the air is fine in there. The circulation is yeah, fine. Yeah, I, I never felt like I was wrapped up and couldn't get out. Yeah, and once I realized that I'm gonna float and the water's not deep, it was just like. Okay, like I'm here. Yeah, you know, I, I a lot of things were going through my brain, but the, the, I wasn't scared. I wasn't. Not, everything went away right away. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was literally just okay. I'm here. This yeah. is fine. What nothing is nothing bad will happen to me in here. Right. Right. So, yeah, it was weird. Just the fact that you open and close your eyes, and you don't know if your eyes are open or closed. Like, there's no way to know. It's fucking wild. Yeah, so the, apparently a big thing is people do a lot of like hallucinogens and then they get in these well, things. Well, I can imagine, you know, <laughs> they're testing with LSD and, and maybe some, some mushrooms. Uh, but he kept mentioning ketamine and people yeah. go in there and you fucking die because you're on ketamine and your blood pressure goes I, down. I've had 
I've heard of because I go to a lot of festivals. I hear a yeah. lot of people that do ketamine. I don't yeah. even know what it does to you. I thought it was. I thought ketamine was speed. Is that what it is? It helps. It's a medication mainly used for starting and maintaining anesthesia. Holy shoot! It introduces a trance-like state. While providing pain relief. Oh, it's a downer. Oh, so you just get super relaxed. relaxed. Yeah, so he was talking about cats winning there on ketamine, and they got so relaxed, they stopped breathing. Yeah, he was talking about the, the three people that have died were on yeah. ketamine. And like on all, sort of, not there, but right. in all of float tanks. Right, right. <laughs> That'd not be really... a tranquil water's float. <laughs> Let's make that clear. Nobody's died there. No one. He's had one person freak out, but no one's yeah. died there. But the guy's got a good business. There's four tanks. He's been there for a couple of years. Where I wanted to go, Anthony, when you mentioned this, was for the longest time, Chicago had the oldest sensory deprivation tank uh, thing in the country. In fact, the world, I think. Oh, really? And, yeah, and it closed down three years ago. Uh, but it was famous for, for many, many years as being like the only one around. And now, if you search this, they're everywhere. Hmm. Yeah, no, this has become a big thing, and yeah. he even Spies mentioned it, but Rogan was really caused a boom for this, but a lot of big athletes do this stuff now. It's really part of a lot of um, intense, high-level athletes pre- yep. and post-recovery. Yep. Um, he mentioned doing it pr- before a big competition, which I didn't th- never crossed my mind. I always thought this would be something for recovery, but he mentioned do doing think, it Yeah, pre- do you think it would, it would help it to visualize like the game beforehand in your right. head? And getting re- super relaxed prior. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting out of your head. And- getting out, yeah. Not being so tense going mm. into something, which that's I thought was, I was like, well, that's yeah. an interesting effect. Yeah. Um, no, I thought it was. Uh, do you feel anything today? Do you still feel something out of it? Uh, eh, How was your sleep? The, my sleep was pretty good. Yeah. From what I can remember. <laughs> Did you get into a dream state at all? No. No, but it was. Uh, it was. It was sound, like mm. I remember going to sleep and waking up right away, so I think I was in a deep sleep. I can sleep anywhere, though, usually. Yeah. I could sleep at a loud-ass fucking concert in really? the middle. Yeah. The vibrations would put me to sleep, like the vibration of the bass. I am I am the exact opposite. If I even hear like my watch ticking, I'll fucking throw that thing out the window. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So sensitive. <laughs> Light sleeper. Yeah. Well, once I'm in the, in the sleep, I'm good. It's just yeah. getting there. First off, my mind is always like thinking about different things and all that stuff. And yeah. then if I hear a sound that distracts me, that'll fucking get me too. But my, I felt like my sleep was pretty good. Yeah. I texted one of my friends who's on the billboard for this place, Mike Jukobin. Yes. yes. <laughs> and he had mentioned that when the first time he did it, he KO'd for 13 hours. Well, he felt he was out. He was sleeping for 13 hours. At, once after the post doing the, Jeez, the, he had a lot of, uh, stress to get out. I guess. <laughs> Fuck. So I was like, I, am I going to sleep for 13 hours? I got shit to do today. I know. I was sleepy. Like, I'm glad you guys are taking a nap because it did. It relaxed you so much that you wanted to well, take I, a Well, I also ate a little meal, Yeah, which obviously will make you a little more tired as well. Yeah, but I, yeah. eating the meal, and I wanted to sleep. I was like, let's just see what happens. So yeah. so would you do it again? Would you recommend absolutely. this? I, yeah. would, I would absolutely. Well, for, here's the thing. I, I would absolutely do it again. Yeah. I'll probably do it again in like two, three weeks to a month. Yeah. Just to try again. Maybe two weeks. I don't know. Would, I, I definitely want long, to do it in. You go longer? I think I would do another hour. I would okay. build up to the yeah. hour and a half. I don't yeah. I don't want to yeah. jump to the hour and a half just yet. I want to still do the hour and keep keep building on it, but I definitely want to do it again. I'm definitely going to go back to the same place just because I'm familiar with it now. Um, would I recommend it to people? So the only thing is, maybe this is just particular to this place, I would definitely recommend it to people as long as you're not like easily claustrophobic. Yeah. Um. Number two, the biggest thing I think is if you're like an older person, it is quite slippery. Yeah. That's the one thing I was like, oh, like I recommended this to my parents and they like fell. Yeah. Like, break their fucking hip. Oh, yeah. Well, he mentioned that they're, uh, they're going to put some grip uh, along the surface of the tank, which would make a lot of sense. Right. There was a mat in there, but yeah, you got to hold on to shit as you, you get make, in there. You got to make sure like... I almost, I didn't fall, but I could feel the mat like moving around yeah, as I was the trying to get out. The mat moved on me. I was like, whoa. Right. But I definitely would recommend it to people that are, um, any, actually anyone, athletes, anyone that's you know old enough that you don't have to worry about falling. And if you fell, you would like really hurt yourself. I mean, I think with people with severe arthritis and, and these, these uh, inflammation issues, like I will say my sleep felt better. My back felt where I twist, tweak that muscle. I feel like it helped that a little bit, help relax it 
back out. Um, and you just, you don't realize how much gravity affects you and Every day. stresses your muscles. Right. And it's like, you do need a break from that, especially if you have arthritis and, and, and back pain and neck pain. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, that was one of the big things as I was in there is I could feel my neck. I'm like, why am I fighting this? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's because my neck is so used to being, you know, pressured by gravity. Yep. yep. And I was in there. I was like, oh my gosh, like just relax. What's going yeah, on your yeah. neck? You don't need to be tense in here. Yeah. Me too. It took a while for the neck to fucking uh, relax out because so, it, yeah, it's weird. What about you? Would you recommend it to people? Would you? Absolutely. Uh, and would you, when, if you do it again, when would you do it again? You said you want to do an hour and a half. I would absolutely go right to the 90 minutes because wow. I felt right when the time was up, something was happening. Something was, I had figured, you know, I had kind of settled into it and gotten over it and something was happening. And then <laughs> the light turned on and I remember feeling a little disappointed. Like I wanted to keep going mm. because I was like, oh, was fucking something was about to happen. I was in a conversation or something was fucking going on. So yeah, I, I want to get back there. The, the the way they get you out of there is they turn on a light in there. Yeah, it's on a timer. Yeah. When when the light came on for me, I went, "Holy crap! I've been in here an hour." Yeah. I was like, I, I've never been just silent for an hour. For an hour. <laughs> you ever been somewhere without a phone? Just you for an hour. Just for amazing. an hour. And then I I intercom the guy. I go, "Is it done? Does that I'm mean I'm done?" And he's going, yeah. "Yep, it's it." I was going, "Oh." I, I I was like, there's no way that was a fucking hour when the yeah, light you, went on. You, you like, thought no time way. went too so fast. So fast. It was wild. It does time does weird things when you're in there. Um but and then I did have a lot of salt in my ears, even with the earplugs. Did you really? have salt in your ear? I didn't feel like I had any. I came day. out I didn't feel like I had any and I but I right off the bat I took out the plug, yeah. threw the vinegar in my ear, and I felt fine. Oh, I forgot to do the fucking vinegar. That was the problem. Oh, you idiot. Yeah, but because it got all crusty. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, it's so, all crusty salt. So this place provides vinegar. I think the probably the other places do, but yeah. that was a big thing is he is saying you don't want the salt to dry in your ear, so you throw yeah. the vinegar. You idiot. Yeah. You didn't throw the vinegar in your ear? I, I did that was the first the thing I did. Vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was all loopy. I didn't fucking remember anything he said afterwards. I was like, I got to wash this salt Where off. am I? Yeah. Who am I? I like, though, the setup where there's like a little shower right there. It's private. It's great. You jump right in. You jump right out. And then you can shower all, all the salt off. The, they do a very good job of making you feel like you're in a very isolated place, but you're yeah. still in touch with everyone. And like, yeah. there's no one judging you. You have, yeah. obviously, the shower. It's not like a locker room setup where you get ready with a bunch of other people. And then go into this tank. Like you, you, you definitely feel at ease at yeah, this you, place. Yeah, you feel comfortable. And then afterwards, you can hang out. And there's like coffee and tea. Yeah, and yeah. Snacks. That was one of the things. Is they, they're like, you want coffee, tea, and they have this like little setup where it's like yeah. very zen. Yeah, just because you got to decompress the decompressing. Right. There's like all these little statues yes. on the table. Books about flotation and right. what it does. I guess Michael Hutchinson is one guy who wrote the big book about it. Uh, they have quotes of his on the wall about the benefits and stuff. So you were getting to maybe a psychedelic place. I was getting something was happening, man, and then the lights turned out. Like, Fuck! <laughs> oh, it can't be over. How soon would you go back? I'd go back right away, like wow. I, whenever. Like it was, it was kind of fun, and I kind of want to. Like now that I'm thinking about that floating feeling, mm -hmm. I kind of want to feel that again. Wow! It's, it's it's it is something that you never a new drug for you. Yeah, it's something that I never felt before in terms of just being weightless and then feeling like I felt like I was in this weird like goo that like <laughs> shaped around me and was just supporting me. It was really weird. Did you feel like you were in water? Uh, no. Oh, After wow. a while, you you it, see, I that never that sensation never went away from it me. It didn't feel like water. Wow. That's what it's not. Yeah, you, I'm, I think that's what you're supposed to feel. Is it, it felt not even like, like water? A gel or something like a really thick gel. Wow! Like I was in chocolate pudding and I <laughs> eat my way out. <laughs> would you? Uh, would you recommend it to your wife? Yeah, absolutely. I want to take her, and I want to take my mom. But the the getting in and out that's the only might thing that be worries an issue you. because she has lots of fucking neck pain, arthritis, all this shit. If she went zero gravity, I think it would it would help out, but. She may be a little afraid of doing it too, but I, 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 there's, there's so many Eastern things, Eastern other ways to get well that we don't think about and we go right to Western medicine and all they want to do is either cut you up or give you pills. Mm. Those are their two options. They'd never have any other option. Was a float tank? Was that, 
Western or Eastern? Who have I done? Uh, uh, it was, uh, I don't know. Maybe it was European. <laughs> uh, all it says, I don't know. The first, the first developed by John C. Lilly. Yeah. A, a medical practitioner. That sounds like a white guy. Sounds like a white guy. John oh, C. Lilly. Oh, so it was U.S. National Institute of Mental Health. Oh, there you go. So it was an American thing, but they were trying to get into your mental health. I wonder if they thought they could use this as a torture device at some point. <laughs> really? You know? Yeah. Like, we're going to take away all your sensory, like, put them in there for six hours. They fucking lose their mind. Yeah, I didn't. I never felt like, I, I mean, I never got to a place where I felt like I would lose my mind. Yeah. I think if you go in there, I think if you, you go in there with a very stable mindset, I think that's probably the best, right? Yeah. It's someone that's aware of, you know, the, all the things that could happen, but is just like completely chill about it. It's like taking acid. Like if you go in. I've never taken acid, so I don't like know. If you go in with a bad vibe, you're going to get a bad trip, man. Like yeah. you got to just be positive and happy and, and, and let yourself go with it. And then you have a good time. It says here John Lennon treated his heroin addiction. In 1979, with the help of 90-minute floats in a cedar wood box. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a wood box. If that's Jesus crazy, Christ. like a fucking coffin. But I could see how it could treat uh, addictions. Yeah. I mean, let me know when you go again. Maybe I'll yeah. plan it around you again and okay. do it with you. we got to learn to meditate. I think that's also important. It is uh, important. I think that yeah. that is very important. But maybe this can help get you comfortable with being... Yes. In that meditative state. Do you state. think this would help people get over their claustrophobia? It could. Certainly could. I feel like the way they set it up, it could, it could, it could help. Well, I've read... So thinking about that meditative state, I've read a lot of stuff where people... Most, most people, when they get up, they check their phone. Yeah. I've read that like a lot of people that are very successful or whatever, before they, when they get up, they sit there for about five minutes and just meditate. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the morning. In the morning. And I read one guy was like, I don't check my phone because that makes puts me in a reactive state throughout the day because I'm reacting to what's happening. Yeah. Whereas I've, if, where if I get up and meditate, I'm in a proactive state. I'm choosing to do this rather than I'm looking at my phone and I'm responding to people. So I, yeah, that thought came through my head as I was doing this float tank stuff. I was like, man, I need to get. I yeah. Need will to get like you that. will you put your phone down every now and then now? I, I hope to. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. But I think doing this more will get yeah. me more comfortable with just being more in the moment. Yeah. Not that I'm I'm in the moment when I'm having fun. It's just when I have my phone by me and there, there's something that doesn't grab my attention right away. Yeah. You know? Well, it's shortening our attention span. It's ruining a civilization, really. Yeah. Well, it, it uh, connects us. It, there's good and bad things, right? Like it, it connects connect us, us yes. to the world. Yeah. And we're, we, we, we have access to knowledge and things that we never had before. We're literally, you know, I don't need to memorize um, facts about certain no. things. I can literally yep. just pull yep. it up on my phone. Yep. We're, we're almost cyborgs in that sense. But, you know, how often do you see when you're, when you're out at dinner with your friends and you look over at a table and there's six people together and they're all on their phones? I mean, like everything, technology, it's a curse and a blessing at the same time. And it always will be because we cannot control ourselves. We have no willpower to use things for good. But what's crazy about this float stuff is it's it's deve- it's the dichotomy, right? Like, yeah, it's intense technology to eliminate technology from your life, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that that that's not cheap to have eleven 1, hundred pounds of Epsom salts in a tank that's nine feet long, five feet wide, seven feet high. Yeah, then you got to keep heated. Yeah, you gotta keep heated. Yeah, right. Like I'm sure that's a shit ton of uh, technical technology that went into building something like that. Yet it's to free your mind from any sort of distraction. See, now that's using it well. Alternative <laughs> medicine uh, is the way. I, I to don't go. think they had. Did they, you think they had float tanks? Like I, I'm almost positive they've been doing actu- acupuncture forever. Yeah, so they probably didn't have float tanks back. when No, I mean was. it says the first one was used in '54, so I don't think it started until the '50s or the idea of it. Uh, but acupuncture goes back like hundreds of thousands of years, right? right, Ch- right. Chinese culture. Um, but I am a proponent of alternative medicine, and I do consider this alternative medicine. I certainly like way. this more than deep tissue massages. Why? Because deep tissue massages hurt. That shit hurts, doesn't it? They get it's in there. painful as fuck. Yeah. I mean, afterwards, you do feel looser and light. Gotta, yeah. But 
This gave me almost the same feeling, and I was not in oh, pain at all. That's interesting, because does it need to hurt to break up all that shit? So you're right. This also will break up lactic acid, right? which is what the deep tissue massage is doing. Yeah, I would... When I did my first real deep tissue massage, which was maybe a year or so ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I walked out of there going, I'm never coming fucking back to this one. This fucking hurt. This hurt so bad. <laughs> wow. She was pushing so hard on my muscles that I could feel it in my bones. Oh, my God. Yeah. And she was going, you need to keep coming back because your body is really tense. Like, you need a lot more work. I was going, fuck you. <laughs> I'm not Jesus. doing this anymore. So that's interesting because, remember, they also have this thing called a hydro massage waterbed. That, that kind of intrigues me, too. It is. So it's a, uh, you stay fully clothed. The heated water jets travel up and down the body, and you control the intensity of the massage and the speed. You can lie on your back or your front. Have the jets pinpoint a certain area. It's using water. That's crazy. 10 yeah. or 20 minute massage. I saw that thing and I, I was going. I kind of want to try that. Yeah, I want to try that now. Yeah. <laughs> I want to try. That's crazy. So like that's using water, not hands. Huh. Mm, interesting. Well, the thing about this thing um, that we did, the float tank, is because I, I follow MMA a lot. They, they yeah. experiment a lot with recovery. There's like hyperbaric chambers that you can sleep in. Yeah. Stuff that simulates being, you know, with low, um, lo in low altitude so that you produce more red blood. So ooh, this got my mind wow. thinking, like, what other alternative things can we do? Yeah. There's what tons. else can we try? There really, there's a lot that we just dismissed that we should try. Well, next, next time, time you do acupuncture, let me know. I want to yeah. try that. And that's like, that thing cures, like, if you want to quit smoking or like any random thing that you want to work on, she's like, I got you. Hmm. Can you just go in there just to do it? Uh, uh, yes. Well, you she's going to gonna like ask a you questions and you kind of need, that's how she w would be guided. You kind of have to I mean, have the, a the default would always be, well, I work out a lot and I got a lot of sore muscles. Yeah, anything. Just she'll, she'll figure it out, too, by the series of questions. Yeah. And so I went in for my back, and she put pins in, like, of course, in the lower back. But then she put them in my feet, in my hands. Did they on hurt? The, on the meat. No, not at all. Not at all. And then she put them in my ears. And oh. she was like, the Air Force has, the, this is from the Air Force, that you put pins in the ears to help back pain it was what? very weird but it it kind of helped it got me on that plane to new orleans like i think it helped and then she did like tens therapy where it's like shocking you mm -hmm. um did she, and, you got cupping too right oh i got cupping she cupped the shit out of me it was fire cupping so oh, wow. there was a cotton like there was a cotton ball soaked in alcohol she would light it the fire would suck out the oxygen and then she would cup it and then she could move it around Jeez. So between all that, it really helped loosen up my back, and I could I could travel. But you should I think everyone should do acupuncture too. It's, it was fascinating, and it doesn't it doesn't hurt, and it's just like a little you feel a tiny little prick, but that's it. I mean, after doing this thing, I'm I'm much more open to doing a lot more different recovery, mind warping, yeah, things. Alternative medicine, alternative Eastern medicine, medicine. like uh, th there's some shit that really works. You just got to try it. Yeah. So. Uh, any final thoughts on the float tank? No, I'm really glad we did it because I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Yeah, so you just never for, never decided no, to do it. I never just pulled the trigger, so thanks for forcing me. <laughs> uh, and and But this was a great way to do it. We had a reason, a goal, and now I'm turned on to this. I'm definitely going to go back. I'm going to try to do the longer thing, try to get to go where I was going. Um, so, yeah, it was a great experience. Loved it. We should definitely, uh, after a few more, we should definitely either – on Jock and Nerd or on the spinoff, um, talk about what places we've gone yes. within the float therapy. Oh, the places you'll go. Oh, the places we'll go. I was in a Dr. Seuss book in there. What happened? <laughs> I, re I turned into the cat in the hat. What the hell's the going on? Raspberries taste like raspberries. <laughs> That's Willy Wonka. Awesome. All right, man. This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Hi, everybody. I'm RJ Metzger. And I'm Rachel Metzger. And we're the Skeptical Skeptics. Each week, we talk about all the crazy things in the world, ranging from the paranormal to Bigfoot to UFOs. And we look at it from the perspective of the believer, the skeptic, and everything in between. So come check us out on the MSC Podcast Network. Or go to SkepticalSkeptics.com and follow us at SkepSkepPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. <laughs> This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network.
crisis for the geek kind. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? Join We Be Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to We Be Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at webegeeks.net. We Be Geeks, your voice for the geek revolution. Want to know more?